like I said, you know, if I was with, my train of thought was interrupted by my dad who was making deals with corporate America, okay? People are concerned with making their money in this world so they can heal people's bodies. Okay, my dad has a Masonic philosophy. He looks up to the Age of Enlightenment. That's why he used psychiatry against me. His emphasis on healing the body, okay? Not spreading the gospel. That's why he calls me to shut me up, okay? I am chosen by God. They are the Jews who went astray, as much as it pains me to say it. I'm the one God inspired to speak. I'm the namesake. I'm the top martial artist. See the signs, man. If you don't see the signs, are you a Christian? If you don't respect the Mayat, are you a Christian? Afro-Asiatic from the Judah. Look at Revelation. How many from each tribe go to heaven? What tribe was Jesus from? Why were the Jews above the Canaanites in the divine order? Why were the Levites tasked with guarding the uh, Ten Commandments, I believe? There is a divine order. Do you understand? And by you people saying you're Christians, but not supporting me in my powerful effort to deliver truth, by you helping them gang stalk me, you have secured your place underfoot. You know, what you're doing right now is going to cause a reaction, a spiritual reaction. Even the Buddhists know it. They call it karma. The righteous men are going to punish you in a way that defeats you once and for all because there's a balance in the universe. When evil defies the balance, good comes down. Boom! Done! That's what the Temple of Horus was about. That's what Joshua and Jericho was about. And that is what Revelation and the story of Samson are about. So how can you sit there and act like I'm not above you? Act like I'm not closer to God for doing his work. Read the Bible. They consider your deeds when you go to heaven. Now, I proudly request that I am judged with the same scale that I judge you. I have no problem with that. A man of God who puts soul over body and understands that mind, body, and soul can only be uh, 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 cultivated correctly when you put that which is above you, soul and God, you know, first, not body. They've rearranged it. You know how they turn the, they turn the pentagram around, right? They say, we're going to put body first. We're pointing at the body, at the earth, at the material realm. We are men of God. Our kingdom is not of this world. And in our kingdom, it is your job to make sure that people like me have a suitable fucking helper if you are a Christian. Not trying to settle for your family member, not doing the Masonic put me beneath them by giving me a less than attractive bitch. It is your job to support men of God to make sure we win. And if you're gang stalking me or contradicting me when you know you're beneath me in the divine order, shame on you. Anyone who adds or takes away, shame on them. And it says flat out, the bread is for the children of Judah. The blessings on this earth are for the children of Judah first and foremost. All those attractive women are meant to be mine. I am Egyptian, Ebo, Judah, and the top martial artist naturally, naturally selected by God because of my heart and my devotion to Christ and the, the amount of passion I feel when I despise the enemy as Matthew tells us too. Love and hate your enemy. Because how can you not love one and hate the other? You can't serve two masters. So when they demand that you serve me, you're like, look, I don't serve you. I hate that you keep telling me to serve you. I don't serve you. Just like it says in Matthew, was it six or five? It's in the, later in, in another clip. Don't you see? Why are you playing stupid? Don't you see? Even if, even if this... Even if the Bible wasn't written and I just came up with this myself, it's fucking logic, dumbass. You support your prince, not the material world. And if I don't get a suitable helper by tonight, I will assume that every last one of you Christians, quote unquote, has betrayed me and I will report that to God. So now I will answer the argument of the white Republican supremacist, nationalist or separatist who happens to claim to be a Christian, who almost certainly is in a secret society, 
that pretends to be on our side. Oh, I know how you think. Your argument, you know, just happens to benefit the white power structure, which is when Jesus broke the bread and the blood, he shared us he shared with us his bloodline, right? That's your argument, right? You know, as you know, you don't you don't think about revelation, that's your argument. Okay. So let's go to Revelation 7. 144,000 sealed. Well, who are they? After this, I saw four angels hold four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Now remember, the Bible describes the earth as a circular or spherical object. So that they can when they say four corners, you have to draw a square or something around the circle. You see what I'm saying? You have to see it in that kind of way. This is what, you know, it has to do with sacred geometry. A lot of people don't understand that. And there's, there's a Babylonian version of it that throws you off as well. Just like there's a book in the Bible called Numbers, implying there is numerology. There is symbolism with the numbers. 12 tribes, 12,000 from each tribe, right? 12 times 12, 144. There is math that is related to scripture and nature and part of how, why the Egyptians were the ones who came up with math. Anyway, um... Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Now, I remember the boondock saints, that gay guy said, but angels don't kill, right? Typical gay, white westerner from Hollywood, confusing you about what angels do, right? What does it say right here? It says, he called out a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the serpent, uh, excuse me, of the servants of God, of our God. Okay? So we're going to seal all these people and everyone else is going to be fucked, right? Because that was meant for them. It's like, look, you idiots have been denying my true children their rightful place. So I'm going to seal them and I'm going to get rid of you. Just like Noah. I'm going to put them on a boat. I'm going to do something with them so they're safe. And I'm going to kill everybody else because you're bootlicking, sniveling, shallow cowards. You are childish. You are selfish, shallow, conformist, materialistic, evil, little conniving little liars. You are worldly, cowardly liars. And I'm going to get rid of you. That's what he's saying. Because it takes bravery to carry your cross and be hated by everyone, right? So you're a fucking coward if you don't do it. And that is a trait of the people who fall short of glory, right? So, um... Then I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Mm-mm-mm. mm Ain't that something? From the tribe of Judah... 20, uh, 12,000 were sealed. And I wonder who's going to be sealed. Let's see. Is it going to be maybe descendants of people who think like me, who bring their children to God as Jesus told us? Or is it going to be some fucking banker Rothschild? Huh, I wonder. Huh. It tells you all the 12,000s, right? Then it goes on to say the great multitudes in white robes. After, after this has happened. Okay, what's the first thing he did? He said, I'm going to make sure that the people who are on the top of the Mayotte are safe. Then we'll take care of the dogs. And yes, why do you think he referred to the Canaanites as dogs? First, we take care of the Afro-Asiatic people. Then we'll take care of the less black dogs and everyone else. Anyway, uh -uh. then the great multitude in white robes. After this, I looked and there before me was a great, remember, all these people are people who were consistent with God. But because of their body and their who they're descended from is whether where they're ranked according to Revelation, not the Illuminati who twists all this. Okay. <clears throat> After this, I looked up and before me there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb, again, another spiritual animal, right? All are an animal in the context of religion. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. Hmm. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be to our God forever and ever. So what is important? Wisdom, strength, power, honor, these things Go hand in hand. These are the traits of a righteous man of God. 
Not a sniveling coward that uses illusion? Come on, think now, people. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? Sir, you know. And he said, these are those who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So look what has happened. From my tribe, these non-Judah Judah people, you know, it's like somebody from my family. It's like me, right? It's like, look, I'll make sure my family's safe. And then I'm going to save all the motherfuckers, you know, and then, you know, I'll make sure that everyone knows my family was, you know, they were the most devout. My dad gave millions to the poor. He has to be put above the rest of you. But I am God's choice. I'm above them and you are below them. You see what I'm saying? Think, think before you say, oh, you're wrong. Think. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will lead, to them, lead them to springs of living water. Again, going back to the water, right? We're 80% water. He's saying, my blood, which contains water, has cleansed your sins because of my Judah covenant with God. So anybody from the line of Judah who returned to Africa is above you. Make no mistake, using that same logic masterfully from a martial arts perspective while everyone else is a fool who doesn't understand why you should go against the grain or have the courage to carry their cross in the first place. Thank you. Now, a pigeon is a gold digger who has not made it yet, right? So let's think about this. Falcons eat mammals, birds, snakes, lizards, turtles, frogs, fish, insect, fruits, and carrion. So let's look at this from an African martial arts perspective, okay? They eat pigeons. Look it up. Now, what do, what do pigeons represent? You know, some slutty gold digger who hasn't made it rich yet, okay? They eat other birds that are inferior in order to secure their rightful place in the mayat, right? You see why I say that? They eat lizards, you know, like the lizard from, you know, uh, uh, Spider-Man or something, you know, reptiles that we know are evil. They eat turtles. You slow fuck. You're slowing down human progress with your inferior philosophy. They eat frogs. The frog went into the prince, that's how it becomes the prince, because the prince consumes the frog, and the prince of light is Jesus, who's represented by the falcon. And we'll get into that in a moment. That is his spirit animal. He has wings, he ascended like a falcon into heaven, like a falcon taken off in its glory to return to the top of a mountain. Okay? And of course, when you talk about Mount Olympus or Mount Zion, right? Mount Zion. Okay, you received the Ten Commandments where birds of prey like the land, and none of you made that connection. In fact, none of you ever even made the connection between the Sermon on the Mount, the number seven, right? Who was concerned with math to the point they built things with math, like building a religion or the kingdom of God? It was Egyptians, right? Five pieces of bread. It says, look, we came out of Egypt. You know, our bodies came out of Egypt in the spirit of the falcon. And the falcon feeds his, his babies, Iasses, fish, okay? So here's two fish of all the things the falcon eats. These are the things that will replenish you in a way that does not reflect being a predator, but rather an animal just trying to live. For example, you know, it's hard for you to understand why I say that. Okay, a fish is like more of a harmless animal, right? When it sits in the falcon's stomach, it sits well. It is that knowledge that sits well, okay? as opposed to those disgusting, detestable animals. You know how they talk about unclean birds of Babylon. Well, what is the clean bird? The falcon. What is the unclean bird? The dragon. You starting to catch on yet? All right, so let's look at some scriptures, shall we? You know, it's weird, I just wrote this. All right, Matthew 5, 15. Okay, and then 6, uh, 22. So let's go to 5, 15 first. Now, some of you say, well, take it out of context, you know. I'm just going to put my picture on the screen. I work way too hard on these videos anyway. Just look it up, okay? And then accuse me of taking it out of context if you think you're, you know better, which is laughable. Matthew 5, 12. 
Okay, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, then we go down to love your enemies, right? It says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. They're saying, emulate Horus, if you read between the lines. Be perfect, okay? Jesus said, look, we're supposed to focus on consuming the fish, you understand me? We're not supposed to fight with these other predators that threaten our place in the natural order if we leave them alone. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is we have falcons designated to taking care of those predators already. Your job is to eat the fish and the bread, the blood, you know, the bloodline of Horus, the blood and the bread, the fish and the bread, the bloodline of the great fishermen. Okay, you eat the blood and the bread to remember the sacrifice that the temple of light gave to you in the form of the son of God coming from heaven. Okay, obviously it is Jesus sacrifice first and foremost, but he represents everyone who sees it his way. Everyone who walks in the temple of light or in the light or who loves truth or light or life. Right, because Horus is the protector. He saves your life. He protects your life. And vengeance is God's, and Horus is the avenger. You starting to catch on yet? Horus does not represent the Antichrist. That is a Western perspective designed to demonize the Africans who hid Jesus and who kicked it with the Jews, who are part Jewish. Amos 9-7 and Nahum make that clear. So we go on. Matthew 14, 13-21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. So he said, look, I'm going to go isolate myself. Now, what do they say in mental health, right? These people are isolating themselves. Well, you, Jesus says, be like God. He says, I am the main example to be like God. And he isolated himself. While psychologists and mental health say, you, you know, you have to be functional in a Roman society. Don't socially isolate yourself. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot uh, from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now I want to ask you all, is your loyalty with Roman American Jesus killing culture or is it with Afro-Asiatic Jesus culture? Okay. So when Jesus landed and he saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So who is Jesus? It wasn't the Europeans that took ISIS out. It was the temple of light because ISIS did not stand with them. Remember, ISIS is in charge of love and healing. So when she did not support Horus to the point where he could protect his people, Horus had to take on her responsibilities. So that's what Jesus is. He represents taking on Osiris, Horus, and Isis' responsibility. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And one could argue those three people work together to represent the, white, the light temple anyway, right? Three, that's what is meant by three is one and one is three. And the three steps of masonry and the three degrees and so on and the three steps to the temple and so on uh and the three steps to the you know to heaven and so on so where are we um they do not need to go away you give them something to eat so jesus replied okay this is what they said as evening approached the disciples came to him and said this is a remote place and it's already getting late send the crowds away so they can go to the village and buy themselves some food it's like look we see things from a worldly perspective even though we feel you just like some of these house niggas who mean well perhaps say you say we have to think about this world and Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. I know what I'm doing, not you. I'm the king of kings, not you. I am from the line of Judah. I am the king of kings, not you. You do what I say, not what you think is best. And did they say, no, no, we challenge you. No, they said, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. They said, look, we only have what Egypt gave us. He said, bring them here to me. Let me show you what to do with what Egypt gave you. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Do you really think any of these white racist oppressors and secret societies know better than the top martial artist with, who's way more smart than they are, you know, for brain surgery? Of course they don't. Of course they don't. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And of course, I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm white. I can't say it like that. I'm going to tell you the truth and explain it to you. So you give people their rightful place in the order. As was taught by Jesus and Egypt. We'll get to that. 
The number of those who ate was f about 5,000 men besides women and children. So five represents the five loaves, the body of Christ, right? These people represent the body of Christ. So there was 5,000 men that represent the body of Christ and the fish represents the bloodline and the Holy Spirit. So you don't need to represent the fish in the crowd because that fish is for the Skywalker chosen by the light temple to be the sacrifice to restore the Mayat. Are you starting to get it yet? Motherfuckers. Anyway, mm -mm. Genesis 2, 19 through 25. We'll start 20. So man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So Adam was in a similar position as I am, right? So the Lord God, so God's spirit came and said, look, I'm going to give you a, holy, a suitable helper. So when you do not see the spirit of Black people or any other people say, we're going to give you a beautiful woman worthy of a priest, a suitable helper, not just a average Christian helper, a suitable helper. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God, so God is doing his surgery, right? The Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, mind, body, and soul. He said, look, I'm going to give you a suitable helper, mind, body, and soul. I'm even going to use your body so you never forget the importance of the bread. Okay? Mind, body, and soul. And the mind and soul is in the blood. So when you accept the bread and the blood together, when you accept the man and his philosophies together, you are included in the kingdom of God. Eat this bread. Drink this blood. It represents the mayat, the divine order. The Afro-Asiatic black man is God, and you will accept that, or you will be wiped out of the book of life, which is also pervasive in Afro-Asiatic culture. What happens when you do something taboo? Come on, Ebos, you tell them. We send those bitches to the forbidden forest. That's what the fuck happens. You starting to understand yet. And what is part of what is taboo? Come on, Ebo, you tell them defying the hierarchy of your village, tribe, or traditions. Mm -mm -mm. This shit gets deep now, doesn't it? So we move on. Um, we're on Matthew 5. Did I go over this yet? 15. Okay. Salt and light. Now remember, they say, we put a grain, accept it with a grain of salt. Well, who says this? Freemasons, right? Accept it with a grain of salt. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, who's going to put them under the foot? The bread and the blood, right? Somebody who's from the bloodline of Jesus, okay, is going to team up with Jesus. And when Jesus comes, he's going to trample these godless masons under feet. So these people are in it for themselves, not their kids. That's why they send their kids to join sex cults and to suck corporate dick. Because they know they're damning their bloodline to hell. It's selfishness. Now listen very carefully. 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hell cannot be hidden. Just like a falcon, right? Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, okay? Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. They say, look, don't cover up the fact that Chukwa Mecca is the top martial artist or any other divine truth like that, you sniveling dog. You prove him wrong by outshining him traditionally. Or you sit the fuck down and respect God in a predominantly Christian country. That's what is said. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Let it be known that you're inspired by God and that you're the top martial artist. Again, I tell you, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. 
Here we go. Damn it, I, where's this one scripture I was looking for? It says you cannot serve money and God. I'll put it in the, in the comments. I thought it was, uh, you cannot serve God and money at the same time. Okay? What it says. And I wonder what the fuck, maybe it was that Matthew 6. Yeah, it's over there. Give me one second. Now, many of you start crying about how I say you and your descendants aren't going to heaven. But this is a Christian country, right? And for the most part, predominantly. And they say that. In fact, Matthew 6. Okay, we're almost done. Don't worry. Treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. So this is Matthew 6, 19. Okay? Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. So he says, look, don't worry about if they steal from you. But store up from, you know, don't worry about making money and security. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. So what are moths and vermin? These are the animals that mess up the harvest, right? And when you're trying to store the food in the granary or whatever you do with it, Right? These are the little parasitic secret societies who are trying to suck out everything that's valuable, you know, so they can make themselves look good, right? 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's a look. If you do not stand, if you do not treasure your Ebo prince who is standing up with all of his heart against darkness, you know, you're going to go where all the people who value money go. Okay, this is not me saying this is scripture. Matthew. You know, there's four key books in the Bible, perhaps, that are the most important. Matthew, Luke, John, Mark. Okay? And after that, maybe Acts. These are probably the four most important books. And what does it say? Let's go to 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. Your perspective, right? If you do not see it my way, you are a traitor to God that will burn. There is no, oh, let's all get together and meet halfway. No, don't put the light under a bowl. Don't water down the word. Don't meet halfway with the pagan or the atheist. The eye is the light of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. If your mind is healthy. So now we have the mind. We have him telling you value your soul. And we have him telling you your body is a temple. So any of you who question mind, body, and soul and don't see my natural blessings in those, these regards, man... I hate you, yet I love you because you're my enemy. Now, where was I? Your whole body, okay, if the, light, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For example, a master mason and God, or a boss and God. No one can serve two masters. Now listen carefully. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So all you gold diggers, he's saying, look, when you love money, you despise Chukwa Mecca. You're a feminist, liberal bitch with an occult, Masonic, Marxist look in her eyes like, you, you, right? Because you despise the person who serves God. You're worried about the distribution of money and people's social, you know, and, and, and people's cons uh, uh, perceptions of people like you, okay? You're worried about the material and the money. Okay? You cannot serve them both. Now, what would America say? Oh, he's a fanatic, right? So which one is it, America? Is Jesus right or are the liberals right? And the neocons? Which one is it? Is it the law of money that determines man-made law? Is it corporate money, banker-derived law? Or is it the law of God? Which master do you serve? Which one? Watch this video again and think about why you all have betrayed me so profoundly and I don't want to speak to any attractive black woman and I, I, I want to push away all unattractive uh, uh, people in general. Okay, now listen very carefully. For those of you who say, well, why do you hate your enemy? Jesus says, love 
and despise your enemy. Ever heard that saying, love-hate relationship? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. He's saying, look, when you serve God, you will hate the devil. You will despise the devil and anyone who's helping him do what he's doing. But do not forget to love your enemy too, so you are not consumed with darkness. So there is no balance between good and evil, but there is a balance between loving and hating your enemies. Thank you.